yeah. I mean, it's nice. Next to you, it's uh, pretty all right. Oh, we don't have live yeah, stuff. Really cool, that was hilarious. <laughs> Great job. Uh, we, do, we do get into it. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this same game started on the right foot. We got a video with your boy Speed, and we asked the man, message to the fans. Give us a message, Speed. What do you got to say? Yeah, so to all the Five Rat fans, I just want to stay. Let's get broken, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I love Speed. He has a sense of humor. I mean, we've been giving this, we've been memeing about, you know, Game Leap and it's broken and it's your boy Speed every single game. At least he laughs with us. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, that's what I like to see. What I don't like to see is the smoke raking right under the obs. So Tia not going to be able to find anything. The side of Five Rat could maybe go in and make use of that. Let's we'll see if they get the swing around. They are under vision here as well from Tiet. So a little bit of back and forth. But yes, your boy speed. It's your boy speed. Gotta love it. Here Gotta we go. It. Stolmanen could be in a bit of trouble because Yamage is having a look around with the disruption. He is well and truly out of, uh, not on his side of the map, but he's running. He was pinged out. Was spotted underneath that observer ward on the cliff. Stolmanen seems to know something's awry here. He'll run straight towards the north into the tree line, has a TP available, and we'll just TP back towards that T1 tower, somehow making it out. Yeah, I mean, he had the ward to kind of show that they were moving towards that area, so he just bails out. A little bit of a TP gone, doesn't hurt too much. I do love, again, we are seeing the tree cut, so Nine doesn't have the best time to just sneak in, get his 93 damage off, and just kind of run around as a tree and protector. Always nice to see just cut trees. Tree into level one, too. Won't feel as bad. Certainly not. I, I do love the fact that everyone just cuts trees when there's a tree. It makes oh, yeah. me so happy. Because I hate this hero so yeah, much. You have it, no idea. It is actually insane. Like, if you think about this combination with an Ursa down the line, level 2, level 3, it's going to be really easy to rip apart. And Nine's the one getting Nine? pulled apart here. Nine, he gets lifted up, taken down, and he's gone. That's not something you really expect as well. The level 1 lift from Stominan, not generally what you go for as a Rubik, but considering speed can secure range creep with Crip Swarm, you don't need the Fade Bolt. And the lift secures them first blood. I mean, you just don't have that bonus move speed. You don't have that bonus self-heal and amp, regen amp. So you can't trade. And that's the really awkward thing. Treant level one wants to trade. He wants to get some hits in, force some regen out on the enemy team. And we've heard it before. Laning phase is all about resource use. It's all about forcing regen, not even necessarily kills, just wasting that early money. And if you can't do that as the treant, then it just feels kind of bad. They do manage to get a pull off here as well from five rats, so some of those creeps get taken out. Lamy is there to clear out at least. And to be fair, Lamy's lane itself isn't too affected. So as long as the Ursa can kind of focus in on that farm, sacrificing your life like that for nine in a mildly tough lane, not the worst thing in the world. Certainly not. Bottom lane, bit of a disruption out here from Yamich, just trying to be very annoying. He gets the ward back onto that small camp. Meanwhile, mid lane, Kits, he will find a kill. That's my fault. No one blamed the observer. He was uh, he was trying to look at that direction. I did the whole misdirect the observer thing. Yeah, you just love throwing PTP for a ride, don't you? Mike? You love throwing all our odds on a ride. I do. Whew. I do. Top lane nine's gonna cop a fair bit of damage there from speed. Very hard laning against the DP, even just at level two. The DP is never fun to have to lane against nine, not having the best time. That's for sure. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Albino Zebra now being chased down, has a full creep wave behind him, though he's trying to match it with the creep wave being pulled over by Yamich. Will at least get himself the range creep, because they are fighting those illusions made by Yamich, but eventually the range creep will go back towards the Shadow Demon. And so, in the end, the pull does... Oh, hold on a minute. Two creeps kind of going rogue here. Napkin has to tank through them. The T1 Tower just hitting them away, so the creep wave... Not really going the way they wanted it to with that pull, but it still sets a decent enough creep equilibrium to, to the way of Thea. Yeah, I do like DNM has managed to balance, dragging the creep wave as well behind that tier one. So he's able to find farm and solo EXP, which is the big thing. Uh, we are getting some really good impact from Albino Zebra, but he is sacrificing his own EXP to give this fairly free lane to DNM. Trade off should be worth it. He's getting enough pressure out just by running around like this. And he still has his five mangoes. So he can still spam all these decays out if need be. Absolutely. Napkin, another pull away. They're trying to block with the trains almost. The pull should be just fine. Albino Zebra. He'll chase them down. 
In the meantime, top lane, a bit of action breaking out. Nine and Lamy, copping a little bit there, but they're going to be all right to survive through it. Thing is, you aren't having the presence you would like in this top lane as an Ursa Trina. And in fact, look at this. Speed, happily going to fight Lamy. Lamy has no chance but to run, or rather no choice but to run. And now Nine, copping a bit of damage on the way back out. It's just not a fun lane. Like, you would assume the Ursa train should be able to do decently well, but this Death Prophet Rubik combination of this top lane is just ruining them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the issue is you're double melee up against double range, and you, you can't even play with a Trian's Nature Skies. Without that tool, you can't gap close, you can't come in for those trades, and it just feels a lot better. Speed can sustain, he can threaten kills. It's really awkward for Lamy, and I am concerned. Like, if he is going for the Battle Fury build we tend to see him go for, if it is stalled out, it can feel like a game where you're not going to have a lot of room to build up. This lineup of 5-rat is made to just take objectives and kind of rush in, not give any breeding room out to a farming core. It's certainly not. 2 to 0 so far, 1k advantage the way of 5-rat. The bot lane as well, like DNM's just free farming so much in this profit. Like, there's no contest here. Top lane, speed's going to go in again onto Lamy. A lot of damage being dealt. Stormin and looking for a lift up, but can't get within range. Probably would have been a kill had they been able to connect the lift. Nevertheless, again, Lamy just... He is still fighting CS, 27 and 1, but his life is always on the line as they make the jump in now into 9. As soon as he shows in that tree line, Stormin goes right for the kill, and it pays off. Yeah, just get these pickoffs. He is giving space out for Lamy, so at the least your Ursa is not the one falling here. He's allowed to farm. He is still finding decent CS, and... That that's probably more than enough to make you happy. You are concerned about how much speed is getting out. Once he hits that six, you could see just a lot of action up there. Maybe a little bit of a shove into that tier one, taking that early objective and forcing the Ursa elsewhere, which is not that comfy for the Ursa early on, especially since, again, you might just be looking for that battle for you build. He hasn't quite queued it up, but we haven't really seen Ursa's deviate from that in any game. Even even in the game with Magnus, we've seen Ursa just go for the Battle Fury anyway. So I'm keen to see if Lamy adapts. The one thing as well here for Tia that is a bit rocky is just the fact that you are getting a lot more on kits than you are on Esk. Like the, the Zeus should still hit the good timing on Kaya, and he is clearing out stacks, a good amount of stacks, built up here by the side of Tia, not scouted out by five rats. So that could be their way to accelerate in, get that extra damage on Esk, and start playing with Burst with the Thunder God's Wrath. Really good timing to have that regen on hand. Nice and easy clear for him. Absolutely. Yes, having a, a fantastic time on the zoo so far. 50 and 4. Rather oh, 51 and 4 now. Top lane. Amy again going to be chased down here by speed. Not much you can do against Spirit Siphons. And now 9 might be in trouble. Spirit Siphons out. He'll try to chase Stormin, but the slow is there. They will at least have the Thunder God's Wrath. But now Speed, he should be able to claim a couple lives here. They take down 9. Speed, can he get away from Lamy? He is trying, but the chase is on. And Lamy finally Ooh. able to punish. And in the meantime, Esk, he will find a double for himself. Four down for the side of Five Rat. And that's what you have to see from Tia. They play around that level 6 spike coming out from Esk really well. Thunder Gods enabling both the top and bottom movement out. And they just get the burst damage they need. So the side of five rat maybe just overextending quite a fair bit. Especially down bot. They were fighting right by the tier one tower. And the difference now is that Kits isn't quite ready to go, waiting for the travels to be up. And that's still well, it's close enough, but that is a difference when you're mid power spikes right now. Much more presence from Esk. He can be present across the map. And you're still trying to get that farm up on DNM. He's had a really free lane, but not quite ready to get the TPs around. And just walking a bit too far, too far forward. I and mean, you do have durability up on Tiet if you don't manage to burst them down. And your lineup here from Five Rat isn't the burstiest. At least not yet. You can soften them up with Albino Zebra around, but you do still need a way of damaging them and locking them in, which is the tough bit for Five Rat. They don't have the best lockdown in these ganks at, at the moment. Top lane, Speed gonna go for a run again. There was a bit of chasing there from Nine, but can't hold him down. Lamy finally able to have that space to, to really get that farm going on the Ursa. Much, much happier in this top lane now. Bit of a group top though, as I say that. Five Rat, they might actually force a, an attempt here on the Ursa. Even Kit's showing up with the lasso available, but he might just take the stacks Maybe from that triangle down. instead. Wait and see what they're going to get up to here. So they do group up. 
Obviously, you do want that tier 1 top tower, but if you can get the Ursa with it, you're much happier. Speed's going to pop the ulti. In he goes after the Ursa. Siphon's out as well. Lamy, he'll turn around, but they don't know Kits is here. Kits now showing up. After 9, they go. The Dream Protector will burn. Lamy, he's sticking around. Instead, they want Yamich on that Shadow Demon, and they should have him. He's going to go for a run, but there's no way out of this. He will drop. Speed able to take that one. And now with the two kills there, they'll be able to find this T1 tower, no problem. Yeah, nice quick shove in. You only have level one living armor as well, so it's not going to stall out this push for too long. You are getting some space out for Napkin to just shove in bot. You know, he's got his level six. He's got the dragon form. He's chipped away really nicely at that bot tier one. And they might be able to find a trade eventually, but top will fall first. And DNM, that is his full Maelstrom flying out soon as well. So he's got more ways to just shove out and keep that farm game up. In comparison, Lamy is still working onto the battle here. So his farming pace is just going to be a little bit slower. You've got the travels up and running as well here. Oh, bottom lane. Yeah, they've got the Dragon Knight. Napkin, now he's just trying to farm creeps. He's just trying to get the <laughs> creep before he dies. I mean, he knows he's dead. May as well get a bit of gold, by the way, before you go. And with that 7-4, to 4, 1k net worth once again going the way of 5 rat 4 stuff. They are still in control of this game. One saving grace is the fact that Esk is still farming very well on this Zeus and should have some pretty decent impact. So they have not been able to punish the mid Zeus for now. But when you look at everything else, everyone else is quite low in net worth. And when you're going against a DP and a Prophet, it's kind of scary if they've got the high net worth because they just tend to take off these two heroes. Yeah, all Five Rat needs to do is maintain that good pace and kind of shut out any farming patterns for Lamy if they can ensure that the Ursa doesn't just get to sit there, farm into Battle Fury, and keep farming after the fact, then you can control this game rather well. They do have really good forward wards in that top jungle to keep an eye out there as well. So they can kind of look to make a movement out. There is movement out here from Tiet, though. Smoke out with Esk and Yamich. Yeah, Speed's in trouble. Not the easiest target to get down. Level 3 Spirit Siphon is up. Yamich gonna go right in for the purge. Lamy just gonna get right to work. And, well, if he's all alone like that, it's not too hard for Lamy. In the meantime, though, bottom lane, Napkin, he just TP'd back to the bot lane. And he is gone once again. Not expecting Kits to still be around the area. So both off laners to drop on both sides of the map. And that bottom T1, I mean, I was going to say they could go for it, but it's already gone. Yeah, I, I don't think the bot tier one's the biggest issue in the world. The mid should be the focus for 5 rat next. They are getting really good activity out from Kits just with the travels. He's willing to show up. Long to run around. Lasso is going to be off cooldown soon. They've got that smoke play eyeing up nine. Yeah, that they are. Not the biggest kill in the world, but it's a good way to start onto that tier one mid. Nine going to get blocked up by those treants, and he is dead. Kits, he would love to find Esk on that Zeus, and he's going for a run after him. He's got the pig stick available. There's going to be a TP in from Yamich to make sure he can't get close enough. And Kits will eventually back his way out of there. But there's no protecting this tier one mid tower now. Speed just has the exorcism, so it just melts. Absolutely zero chance. And with that taken out, it's going to be a lot tighter for Lamy to just find that farm he wants. He's clearing out the Ancients. There is no vision here coming out from Five Rat, so it's a fairly safe spot. Battle Fury only two parts away. So he's still finding some decent room oh, to actually not get the build up. Again. Not Yikes. again. Akit is haunting this man. Yeah, I mean, we, we heard fear. He did say this wasn't a very good DK game, and, well, the impact of Napkin hasn't really been felt. I mean, he's shoved in bot. It's down to 580 HP, but they haven't been able to kind of commit onto that. And again, just going back to those odds from esportsbet.io, 4.47 to 1.75, if I recall right, from the start. Accurate enough, 1.18 to 4.66 right now. Okay, okay. It shifted a bit. Yeah. Still in favor of 5 rat. I mean, Tiet, again, they've proven us wrong before, especially in that series up against Alpha, but right now it's just a shaky start. They need to stall a lot to get Lamy up and running. The one thing that they do have down the line is they have really good high ground defense with a Zeus. Eventually, if you can find a space, the Ags buildup will ensure that you can deal with, with the push coming in from the Nature's Prophet and to an extent from speed, you can just kind of stabilize your lanes. So they can try to stall to get that to that point. The question is whether whether or not Five Rat will give them that opportunity, will give them the time to get that build up here. We'll find out. I don't think so. I mean, Five Rat are just smothering them right now. 
They do take a bit back to, to farm up a, a couple core items. Like, Kits has got the Aether Lens on the way now on the Bat Rider, so has that added kind of range for the lasso. Makes it much easier to land that. So you're going to have the Prophet as well. I believe he's going straight into the Glaipnir, and he might have it. There it is. Glaipnir up now. That's a scary timing. Like, you've got that at 13 and a half minutes, just about 14 minutes, and now the team fights for Theoth become infinitely harder. Just so much more control, and... As mentioned, that was something that Five Rat does lack in these wider fights. They're going to be able to provide that now with DNM on hand, and they're still eyeing around for opportunities. I mean, every spell Stominant steals is just so annoying. Like, now he's healing down Bot, which, again, Nap can try to shove in. It's still standing. Bot jungle is still protected. And now the tower is healing up. You know, you're, you're just not finding these small things yet. Still, blink up on Napkin. That could be the timing they play around. Just have that blink initiation on hand, but it's five rat to smoke up right now. That they are. Through the mid river they go. Five rat. They'll head up top. Esk is around the area. In fact, Esk is going to be the first one to be spotted if he's not too careful. Stomina will run through. They won't see him yet. Pings are out though. They know the Zeus is there. They'll wrap around the long way. Esk. Trying to make a run for it, but in comes the cavalry kits, pincering him in. He'll go for a heavenly jump out. Stolmanen gets the lift off. Esk is not going to be able to survive through this. There's just no way. No way in hell he survives. Another kill to go the way of Five Rat. And that's a big one. That's the mid Zeus. That was your basically your highest net worth hero on the side of the Dire. Just going down so easily. It is much needed space coming out for Lamy though. He does have that full Battle Fury up, and he's got room to farm down Bot. So that space is worthwhile to get that build up on the Ursa. Your big win condition right now. Working on to the BKB and Blink. We haven't seen the Blink reveal up from Napkin, and Roche is set to fall with no contest coming out from Tiat. So they're going to have even more ways to just pressure these engines. Secondary life up for DNM. He can afford to take some risks even without the BKB. They are looking to take that bot tier one, and it looks like Tiat should at least find this one. After after a long time of that just standing. Well, they'll, they'll take it. Lamy working on towards the BKB now. So he doesn't really need anything like a Lincolns because he has Yamage to, to cancel the lasso if it does come out on the Ursa. Just needs to be able to survive through everything else. And Theoth. Not out of it yet. I mean, 4k advantage is there for Fire Wrap, but it's not too big of a deal. I suppose the Aegis is much more scary. DNM, TPing down bot. Looks like they spotted Napkin on the DK. Sprout out to give some vision. DNM eventually going to find it, but a nice blink away from Napkin. Duking out the projectile completely in this gank attempt. It is not going to work out. Fire Rat, they'll have to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, a lot of time wasted here by Fire Rat. And Tiet, more than happy to just back off. And can keep that farm game up. Smoke up with Napkin and Yamage. And they can get some pick offs going if they do find the right target. And pings are coming up for DNM under vision. See if they can find him. He's a massive target. Napkin has the blink up, just needs the initiation. We'll be able to find it. Yamage is there to back him up, but can they get the damage out in time? Purge is there. DNM, he has the Aegis, don't forget, so he might lose one life, but in comes the rest of the team now. Kits moving right onto Napkin. They already commit disruption, so Napkin's a bit of a sitting duck now. At least they might find Yamage out of there, and they do. Yamage is able to TP, but they'll lose their core DK. I, I suppose you've got to be somewhat happy you do find the Aegis. So that's gone now. It's something you don't have to worry about, but that's that's pretty much it. That's a really risky play. And tier one top still standing with how close DNM was to that area. You know a response was coming out. And despite losing the Aegis, they've still got this opportunity to siege onto that tier two. Exorcism still standing for speed or coming off cooldown in about a second. He's got the Yults and the mech to stand front line. You don't quite have the burst. You don't have that Thunder God's Rat, so it's going to be a lot tougher to soften these guys up. Oh, they found Yamich in the backside as well. Get rid of that Shadow Demon. Overgrowth's committed, but it's going to do nothing. Nine? Oh, boy. Yeah, he's just gone. So hard playing Dream Protector against the Batrider. Even more annoying against DNM's Nature's Prophet. And that's a top T2 gone. There's going to be no form of trade either. They're not in position to go after a T1 mid. They can't get the bottom T2. And now mid lane, we might have another fight to break out because Stominant's just hanging around.
but it seems like he's just making sure the creep wave does not get forced. He does not want that damage to fly out onto the tier one mid tower. Just make sure it does remain defended. And Fire Rat, they will just continue dominating through this game one. Yep, take control of the, bot, of the top jungle, cut off the farm sources for Lamy. He's soaking up everything he can on the triangle and the bot, but that is choking out everyone else. I mean, Napkin's net worth has just not moved past the blink. Smoke out from Tiet again, though. At least find Stolmanen, for the love of God. Can they? They should. Oh, he gets oh. the stolen stun out, and now the lasso. Oh, the humanity. Oh, oh that's a feels bad, man. Oh, <laughs> he boy slides him too. <laughs> oh. That that was just so confident of them, overconfident of them. Like they see Stominant, they know he has Dragon Tail. They only have Dragon Tail stunned themselves. They didn't have Overgrowth. They didn't have follow up. They jump in while Esk was a bit too far out to follow through with some burst, and they lose their Ursa. Like this is the guy who's who you've been trying to enable for such a long time. Granted, you do have that BKB up and running on Lamy. But that's that's not the trade you were looking for. And you just think about Rubik versus DK. I mean, it's so easy to steal Dragon Tail. Yeah. And you get it, you have it in melee usage, so it doesn't have projectile at this range. It's uh look at that range. Lovely. It's uh it's decent, that's for sure. Very easy to land here for Stormin. That's a big stun as well, like almost three seconds. Yeah, exactly. Right. That not... range. It's just, it's so dumb that he has that range, even without the dragon form. It's like, yep, no projectile, no dodge. Nope. Just a free pseudo hex on hand. Very good. What do you do now as Thief? Like, you're 6k behind. Uh, I suppose the one saving grace is Lamy is still farming very effectively on the, on the Ursa, and you do have BKB now. But at what stage do you think Thief can realistically fight back? Blink up on Lamy is your next best bet so he can just jump in follow through for the team instead of running up a uh, very telegraph which is, is something we've seen five rat control quite nicely it's hard to spot these wards as well out from five rat but they need to get control of some vision like this this ward right in front of the tier two is just giving so much info for this you know, always the hard thing going up against the prophet is you just never know when he's coming in you do have the four staff on yamich so he's gonna be okay but now the mid C2 tower is going to be under siege. Speed, no hesitation, pops that exorcism. They've got a siege creep there to help as well. And you kind of ask yourself, can Theot even defend this? Like they're not as five in the mid lane. It doesn't really feel like they want to try and defend because if they lose the fight, then Fire Rat could go high ground. So it seems like they'd rather just let it go and just kind of accept that that mid lane is just dead. Yeah, they, they stalled out a little bit with living armor, but doesn't stall for much lamey. Yeah, uh, he's gonna go for a ward, but that reveals his position. And they already knew anyway. Look at DNM. Look at him waiting. Oh, they don't have the vision. <laughs> oh. oh, a bit too patient there, DNM. Yeah, maybe oh, just a bit too. cocky. I mean, I guess the D ward paid off. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> it touches out that gank. Uh, forces a lot of heroes down bot from five rat. So giving much needed room out for the rest of Tia to kind of get some build up in their own jungle now. Try to work towards that E-Blade out from Esk. It can be pretty damn helpful up against a physical core like DNM's Nature's Prophet. And just kind of amping down people as well. Really big rune out for Kits though. Arcane rune ready on her bad rider. Just going to be able to keep spamming those spells. Not a worry in the world if they do find themselves in a fight. 15 to 5, 22 and a half minutes in. A 7k lead for 5 rat. The blink for Lamy finally up. So you can you can start to play around this blink BKB timing from Lamy. This, along with Napkin jumping in, you have ways of finding these fights, and they're just instantly smoking. They've got to find something off the back of this. See what they can. I mean, they'll head through the mid lane. Still 45 seconds till we find out when Roshan will respawn. Line drawn out. They will run right towards the west. It's kind of a, a question of who can you find, though. Like, this area of the map is generally safe for Fire Rat to try and farm in, so Theoth are trying to punish them, but nobody's around. Fire Rat reading the movement of Theoth very effectively, and now they'll go for a counter smoke. They know exactly where they are because they showed on that creep wave. Maybe. Very, very cool. Oh, no. He ran back for the, for the camps. He doesn't know. 
and he might just get spotted. Thunder God's Wrath is there. That'll give enough info for Lamy to get the hell out, but the chase is still on. Can they catch him? Not quite. He's going to be all right. It seems like Esk, though, he got those spidey senses tingling. He knew something was awry and luckily popped the ulti to find out exactly where they were. Yeah, I think they got suspicious when they saw the treants come out from DNM. They're like, all right, probably setting them for a gank. Break off that gank and bail out in the nick of time. They were very close to success, though, if the Decay just landed from Albino Zebra onto Lamy. I mean, the blink would have been cancelled. You would have had a window to try and get that jump in. And that could have ended very badly for Tiot. So just a little bit more and maybe Five Rat could have had it, but they dodge out in the nick of time. Aegis, Roshan still a ways off as well. Two minutes on the respawn. So a lot of time for Tiot to try to build up some tools. Basher coming out for Lamy next. Might want to do something with his haste. See what he can do. Still hanging around, Thea. Just on that eastern side of the mid-river. Just kind of hoping and praying someone from Five Rat shows up, but... Well, at the very least, the Albino Zebra is underneath the ward right now. No, he's fine. Thea are just holding their ground, again, being very patient, just waiting for someone to show on that mid creep wave. But nobody's doing so. Five Rat again, it's kind of reading the movement, understanding that they are probably waiting. Nobody will show up. There's just no free gifts for Thea whatsoever this game. Yeah, just not given anything to play with. Again, this is time to farm. This is time to build up, at least. We are seeing the Ags being queued up by Esk. So he does sort of abandon that E-Blade. Just wants to try to get some control back. Uh, kind of handle the split push that Five Rat is pulling out. Full AC up for DNM though. Along with a Grove Bow. So our NP can reach pretty far and melt, melt quite fast on certain heroes. Melt certain heroes fast, I mean. And just, it, it becomes tougher and tougher for Tia. Because your jump in is really all in on Napkin. And if you don't manage to get the jump in you want, the follow through from Five Rat to punish is really wide. It's always risky for Lamy to jump in, even with a BKB, because Lasso doesn't care for that. And with a BKB on Kits, you're also not stopping him from lassoing. I mean, poor old Napkins is trying to get a BKB up. Let's have that up before the next team fight. Give him a bit of leeway in these fights, but. Oh, Roshan. Albino? Yeah, he knows. Roshan's yes. up. There you go, Albino. Doesn't leave the pit too early. I mean, the, it doesn't seem like they've recognized what Five Rat are up to because you certainly don't want to give Roshan away for free like this. They are pushing the bot here too, but they're not committing. So they really don't know Roshan's happening. And they got scan off. They know now. They're way out of position to kind of contest. Roshan's fall super fast with that damage out coming out from Albino Zebra. Nice and easy take for the side of Five Rat. Free shard as well, coming out for Stominant. So a Telekinesis save now available for them as well. Just making things harder and harder for Tiet to get that jump in. Why the hell not? Tia is still so patient at this bot lane, still waiting for someone to please show. DNM's there. They've got the vision on him now. He's underneath that Observer Ward. This will be a massive pickoff if they can catch him. Keep in mind, again, he has two lives available. So his team should be able to make it in time. But they'll get through the first. Glaipnir out to hold them down. Here comes Speed. He'll go right onto the Dragon Knight. Make this guy's life a living hell. And poor old Napkin. He is going to go down. Nine also spotted out of the tree line. Kids, he had the lasso but won't bother popping it. I suppose it just doesn't deem it worthy to pop it onto Nine screen Protector. He'll hold it for the next fight. But it's still going to be an Aegis for a DK. I, I don't know if you really call that worth for Theoth, but it seems like they're happy with it. And you take away the security for DNM? I mean, when you take Aegis like that, you have to find an opportunity to actually punish the Aegis carrier next time. And DNM's just been so cautious, right? He doesn't jump into these fights unless he's, he's sure that he's his team's ready to back him up, unless he's sure there's a good position for him to be in. Uh, to kite the Ursa around. So even finding that Aegis doesn't stop Five Rat. And I, that's where it gets really dicey for them. It's These trades just aren't giving them much to play with. Like, yes, it's an objective taken away, or at least security taken away, but you still can't do anything on top of it. Like, you are still 
just running around this bot jungle, finding what farm you can, sharing with your cores, and you're not able to make any moves on the map on top of that take. Well, still, they hang around opposite sides of the map. 13k advantage, so for Theoth, they definitely Fire don't want to engage in a fight if they can avoid it. To five right four stuff, I mean, you'd surely love to push high ground right now, but they'd love a pick off before that. They'll see Napkin at the bot lane once again. Albino, Zebra, and Kit slowly moving in, but Lamy's going to be there on the Ursa. Does also get spotted out. Yamich right behind them, so if they go for a lasso, it should be cancelled, but no Yamich. He gets the four stuff off. He does cancel the lasso eventually, but it may not matter. Lamy forced to BKB and try to man fight through this. DNM, he's gonna get bashed up, but it looks like Lamy's had enough. Silence. He wants to run. They take down nine. They've got Yamich. They do at least get the Ursa out of there. But you saw there's just no damage. The like Lamy, he just gets a bash and he's like, screw it, I'm out of here. This is not good. Yeah, and the silence comes out right as they're trying to commit overgrowth. If the overgrowth came out, Lamy might be, might have been able to commit. He would have had a window to just get that damage off with a fruity overpower coming through, but it just doesn't line up. The one good bit of news for Tiet is that Exo was popped, so the side of Five Rat can't quite siege the high ground without that, at least not quickly. They can set their sights for bot though. Looks like they are clumping up for that move on that objective, and for Tiet. They don't have to worry about certain things from 5 Rat. Um, the last outer tower not worth fighting for, for the most part. They're not even fully committing. Side of 5 Rat playing really safe. And Tiet going for a smoke play. Five man smoke up. See what Tiet can find. Like you mentioned, Overgrowth is still available. So decent setup here for the side of the if They can catch 5 Rat with their pants Radiant. down. Maybe they can find Albino Zebra going after that Refresher Ruin. Oh. And they do. Albino, he'll get blown up. Stormin and even showing up there for a moment, but won't get punished for it. Just takes the Breathe Fire away from Napkin. But it's something for Thea. It's a bit of breathing room here for him. Give Lamy a bit more space to continue that net worth grind. Still very behind DNM though. Just about 3k behind. And 14k in total in terms of the teams. It's uh... It's really rough for the other cores. Like, Esk, he does have the full Ags up. So the Nimbus is in play. That is a lot more output for him in the middle of these fights. Uh, a nice little way of dealing with some split push if you do feel the need to. And I think the one that's really hurting is still Napkin. Like, you mentioned him saving up for the BKB. It's, he's still saving up for it, Mike. Oh. The investment's still ongoing here for Napkin. It is a rough DK game, to be fair to him. As Fear just really pointed out a lot, like he really didn't like that DK pickup for the matchup. And you can kind of see why. It's not the easiest time for Napkin to get anything done for his team. His lane was pretty rough, even though it wasn't even a Batrider lane. It was just not a lane that worked in his favor with how Five Rat played it. And for Tia, you're going all in on Laney. He is going for the Abyssal next. And napkin. smoke out here. Yeah, smoke out. Slomanen's already around. Lift is up onto Napkin. In goes DNM with the Glaive Fear. This Dragon Knight just completely melting. Nine. Gonna go for the TP. Was dusted up. Speed. He can't get the Yules off in time. Meanwhile, Lasso is there. Looks like Yamich was the one in trouble. DNM's gonna try and TP out with his BKB and he's gonna be okay. Yamich will get Yules up by speed. He is going nowhere but down. No saving him. And it, I believe we've also got Demonic Purge stolen here by Stominant. That is beautiful. That's uh, that's actually a massive steal for Stominant. Look at the range on that. That's the entire screen. Oh my! If goodness. he's on the center, like he could cast from a screen <laughs> away. It's uh, quite the reach. Oh boy. Oh, and he wants the Ursa. It's like the perfect spell for Ursa as well. He just can't run from it. It's such a grief for an Ursa player. Lamy. Still running. Nine does buy a bit of space with the overgrowth, but the chase is still going. Speed is there with the Yule Scepter. How can you survive through this, Lamy? He'll try to trade with Speed. The damage is just so high, though, onto the Ursa. Still fighting, but Speed, he does find the kill along with Kits. He will drop for their trouble, but they got the Pos 1 Ursa down. He is down for 70. Napkin also finding out Bino Zebra, so maybe they can slow down any kind of high ground push to income. We'll see if Five Rat want to try and force it. Maybe not. Maybe they'll just be okay with the Ursa kill. But still another successful team fight here for the Radiant side.
Yeah, I mean, you find some trades on tier. Punishment onto speed is great, but you saw how long that took. Like, the guy's just so tanky. Really great place coming up from Staminen. We've seen him do spectacularly well in the Rubik before. This is one of those games, again, where he gets to shine. Full Octarine up on Kits, though, along with a Quickening Charm. So, Lasso cooldown down to 99 seconds. Very, very nice for him to just keep that aggression going for his team. And the spam ability of Sticky Napalm, it's going to feel amazing for him now. Going to be a little bit rough for Tiet. For Tiet's part, they're working onto this Ags for Napkin. So, he's going to have more forward presence once that's up. It's just, they're not the aggressors right now. No. They don't have the map control. They did have the single target pickoff tools, I suppose, with a blink up, dragon tailed, and bombarding with the Zeus from a mile away, but they didn't find that timing. Yep, DD, they did not. DD rune available as well. Rush timer, we'll see in about 20 seconds if it's a fast one. And that Rush, it feels like it'll make it or break it. Like, this is the moment where one Roshan fight, one Aegis up for five rat, they can definitely see Kai ground at this point. Let's see what happens. Smoke up immediately by five rat. They want to make use of this double damage rune. Theoth, I believe, know about it. They saw the Fade Bolt in the mid lane. Speed will show himself. Roshan still 2 minutes 20 seconds away. Oh, and Lamy, he's the closest target for them. He'll run towards the east of the map. He should be all right, but Kits is on the chase. Can they get there? They ping him out. They've got Lamy. They've got the Ursa. He needs some help right now. But no, he's surrounded oh the neutrals. Even the neutrals stunned him. Oh my goodness, that is just... Oh, uh, I mean, that, that's just rubbing salt into the wound, man. That's not fair. Yeah, I mean, that's a great position coming out from Kits to drag him all the way back to. A very calculated decision to put him in that tree line right next to the creeps. And just so happens, the creeps are on his side. You know, they, <laughs> it just works in their favor. They literally chain stunned him after lasso. <laughs> Better than the pub plays <sighs> I play with, John, let me tell you. I need some of those neutrals in my games. Onto the tree if they go. That'll be nine gone. Speed will take the kill happily. Keep in mind, the Ursa still doesn't have buyback available right now, so he's down for 40. It's definitely an opening here for Fivra. They'll try. Jump in. They've got the start onto S for disruption. It'll buy a little bit of time. S. Oh, he heavily jumps on the spot as well. Ouch. Oh, it's interesting as well. DNM went for the mischance on Sprouted Units instead of the leash. Wow. So he just wants to torture our Ursa. <laughs> why not? I mean, why not? They're on to another. That'll be Napka being chased down. On to they go, the Yamich. Do they just go t fours? They're thinking about it, I'm sure, but they'll play it safe. They'll go top lane instead. Just go for the push. Yeah. Lamy is back up. He's teeping right in front. Jump in, Lamy. Onto the bat rider, but the lift away from Stormin is going to be more than enough to save him. Lamy, he'll go after the tombstone. Overgrowth is there. Yamage trying to save. DNF just moving in. He doesn't mind. Now they are taking a fair bit now from Napkin. Kids unable to find a target on that bat rider. Can they turn? Lift is back out onto Napkin, and he is dead. Has buyback on the Dragon Knight, but won't have Dragon Form. And for Five Rat, I believe they probably need a reset, but the thing is, you've got a Nature's Prophet. He could just come right back. And in we go. They found Yamich again. This stolen dragon tail is so annoying to try and play against. Yeah, it's, it's quite the spell when you steal it on Rubik. Stamina has just been having a lot of impact with that for some time now. And there's just no way to stop. Like, they haven't used Nimbus yet on Ask. Nope. So they've got that option, but how do you connect with it? You just don't have smooth ways of playing with that burst anymore in the Zeus. Felt like he had again. the timing earlier. Yeah, speaking of the Zeus, John Esk, he's being dragged to his own Ancient right now. Silent stop, he is dead. They can't save him. It might just be around that time to call it. Lamy's getting dived in the fountain at this point. Nine, he'll get sprouted up in the tree line. And imagine that, being stuck in the trees as a tree. That's not a good feeling. Again, you don't have a leash. <laughs> just getting stuck up there. <laughs> Shove in, not gonna take too long for the tier force to melt yet. They could try for some Hail Mary play with Lamy and Napkin, but it feels really difficult. I, I don't see 
I don't see that working out too well unless you have your Zeus at least. Well, there you go. Lamy's going to jump in. He's onto the bat rider, but the lift again going to save the day. Lamy trying to fight. We'll go after DNM, but there's just no fighting. He's getting kited around on the Ursa. Albino Zebra at least to drop. Glaive to hold him down. Sprout him out. Yamich is trying to help, but he gets bursted down by DNM. Overgrowth is there from nine. It does buy a bit of space here for this Ursa as Lamy's trying for the TP play out and does make it. But now, with three down on the side of Theoth, who defends the Ancient? They'll buy back on the Tree Protector. Napkin's in trouble on the bottom of their base. He will go down. Albino oh, Zebra man. giving it to them as well with the voice lines. How do you fight against these guys? You just can't. Jump in from Napkin. I don't know about that one, Napkin. I mean, I guess you've got to try. Give him a rampage. We haven't had one yet. Can he get it on this Nature's oh. Prophet? DNM's running back onto Lamy. It could be the first rampage of the oh. NBC, and there it is. They've got the rampage. DNM's done it. No one to steal the rampage this time around. He finally gets it done. But they can't take down the Ancient. Theoth, Lamy, oh. gonna jump back in again. DNM still running, still Guardian Greaves out, healing him up a little bit more. Now the lift back, get down, Mr. President. DNM is not gonna die. Esk is gone. Lamy still trying to get some form of damage up, and he needs the oh, back. DNM? DNM's back in, oh, but he chance. doesn't care. He's just gonna man up. Lamy's trying his the best, mischance. but he's not hitting anyone. The 100% <laughs> mischance. Oh, what an ending to a game. Lamy's not done. He is not done, he wants more. Maybe this time oh. he'll finally find DNM. He's on to the Undying. Albino Zebra now trying to run. Somehow, this game is not over, but Lamy, surely, Ooh. oh, he'll get back to the fountain. He will get back, but the Ancient is still exposed. In what? he goes again. Lamy, he finds a triple kill. Oh, can he keep it up? DNM's gonna buy back. They want this game over. Wait, but no, this horse doesn't give up. DNM, you'll hit the ancient, that's it. <laughs> oh, oh man, what a way to end that one. I'll give it to him. I mean, I thought, what are they doing? They're not calling GG, but he, he was kind of close. He